Hello, my name is Dr. Danita Harris, and I am your Chief Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Officer. I am very excited to be able to participate and conclude this year's Black History Month with an event that I think you will find very interesting. I want to say thank you to each and every Black educator who took the time to share not only about themselves, but about the many different ways that Black people have contributed to our society and to our history. It's important that we always remember that Black history is American history. I want to tell you a little bit about myself. Again, I'm Dr. Danita Harris, and I have had the honor to be an administrator in the MSD of Wayne Township for the past 20 years. I was born and raised on the east side of Indianapolis. I attended Lawrence North High School, and I went on to earn my bachelor's degree from IU Bloomington. I was very fortunate in that. I was able to attend IU through the groups program as a first generation college student. Upon completing my bachelor's degree at IU, even with a teaching license in secondary education, I didn't go on straight into the field. Instead, I took some time and I worked at the juvenile detention center as a juvenile probation officer. I had the opportunity to work with young people who made, made mistakes, but it was through those mistakes, I hope that they grew and that they learned. And hopefully they've gone on to be very productive citizens. After I spent about a year at the juvenile detention center as a probation officer, I went into teaching and I taught in Indianapolis public schools for five years. I started working on my master's degree in administration while I was there. And a month after I graduated, I joined uh, the MSD of Wayne Township. After working in Wayne for several years, I again went back to school to earn my PhD at Purdue University in Educational Leadership. I graduated in 2014, and sometimes I'm still amazed at that, that I actually have a, a PhD. It's something that I always said that I would do when I was younger, um, but it's one of those things that when you look back, it's like, wow, I really have a PhD. So I'm extremely thankful and grateful for it. I have two beautiful daughters. One, um, my oldest daughter is a senior at Ball State University. Um, she will graduate in May with a biology degree. And my youngest daughter is a junior at Warren Central High School. I know, I know. I always call myself a giant warrior, um, but uh, she's a junior at Warren. I live in Warren Township. And uh, believe it or not, I'm also an elected official for the Warren Township Trustees Board. So I have an opportunity to serve um, the community in which I live, uh, those who experience hard times. I'm able to sit at that table and help make decisions in terms of how money should be spent and how we can support the East Side community. I have a little dog, he's a Yorkie named Diego, and um, he's running around here somewhere. I'm actually surprised he's not squeaking his toy. He gets a little jealous when uh, we're not paying that much attention to him. On today, the last day of Black History Month, but again, not the last time we'll be talking about Black history, but the last day of Black History Month, I wanted to share with you what I've learned probably within the last five years about Juneteenth. Juneteenth uh, sometimes can be referred to as Black Independence Day, Freedom Day, Jubilee, Jubilee Day, and it's even been referred to as America's 
second Independence Day. See, back in 1863, President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation that was uh, that was supposed to free all the slaves, um, all of those, I'm sorry, who were enslaved. Um, but it took until January the 1st, 1865, when the 13th Amendment was signed by President uh, Lincoln that would abolish slavery in its entirety. So we've got 1863, and then we've got January the 1st, 1865. Both were said to abolish slavery. However, it wasn't until June 19th, 1865, that a general arrived in Galveston, Texas to inform 250,000 Black enslaved individuals, men, women, and children, that they were free. They did not know that they were free. See, unlike today where news travels quickly through social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Clubhouse, text messages, email, you know, news travels fast today. It didn't travel fast back then. So 250,000 black people thought that they still were enslaved. It was at that time, June 19th, 1865, did they celebrate and boy, did they celebrate. Celebrations consisted of prayer, praying and fasting and, and food and dancing. They were free. Now, in 1980, Texas declared June 19th as a state holiday in 1980. Again, I didn't hear about Juneteenth probably um, it wasn't until the last five years or so. In 2021, Governor Holcomb, the current governor of the state of Indiana, signed an executive order to claim Juneteenth as a holiday for the state of Indiana. He declared it, Governor Holcomb declared June 19th a holiday, a state holiday before it was even a federal holiday. Juneteenth did not become a federal holiday until June 17, 2021, where it passed both in the House and in the Senate under our current president, President Joe Biden. He signed the Juneteenth National Day of Independence Act into law. Juneteenth is the first federal holiday to be approved since Martin Luther King Jr. Day in 1983. Juneteenth is a day of celebration. Why? Because Black history is American history. Black history is our history. Again, thank you all so much for joining us for the month of February. No, even though it's a month we set aside, we learn about Black history all year long. Why? Let me hear you say it. Black history is our history. Have an awesome day.